everywhere I go, God is there with me. Everything I look at, I'm seeing the God in it. So that's why we are meant to connect with everything because we're all really part of that that same essence, that same spirit. So if uh, God exists, then it's the opposite to God. And the opposite to God will be always fear or you will call it the forces of evil and these kind of things will exist or that doesn't exist in the book of miracles. Right. It, it says um, in the beginning, the introduction, it says the opposite of love is fear. But what is all encompassing has no opposite. God is all-encompassing. There is no opposite to God. There is no opposite to love in reality with that big capital R again. But in this world where I think I am, I have all kinds of opposites to all kinds of things. And in this world, I do think that fear is the opposite of love, even though, as Einstein said, it's all a miracle or nothing. But I'm believing in fear. So, of course, in miracles is to help me unlearn that. I like it about thank you. <laughs> uh, which uh, transformation did you observe in your life with this work? Like, give us some examples. Like, I don't know. Um, it, well, a, a couple of things. Um, going through things easier with with less uh, angst around it, okay? Like I, a divorce. I went through a divorce after I was a course student. And um, it it there was less fear. There was less tears. Not that there weren't any, but I got through it quicker. One of the best examples is um, I started the course right after my divorce from the father of my children. And uh, there was a lot of stuff around that. And um, my kids were little. And there, the children had their own phone line. And my phone rang and I answered the phone. This was before cell phones. These were, you know, regular telephones. And I answered the phone and there was this voice on the other end. And he asked for my son. And I said, who is this? And he said, his name, his father. And I was like, oh my gosh, I must have forgiven him because I don't even recognize his voice anymore. And I didn't have any feeling of anger towards him. Oh. So... Yeah, that was like, oh, okay. Um, I guess that is, you know, one one of the biggest transformations. I've also, I I, um, I used to catch colds all the time. I don't anymore. And if I catch one, like I did a week ago, I was done with it in four days. Mm -hmm. Where I used to be like for two weeks, I would be sick. So things are just things just heal quicker i know that sounds wonky but it, it seems to be my experience yes um well i don't know if you are familiar with the word trauma or with this kind of thing things that people and therapists say that Usually, we can have a lot of trauma from our, our childhood or from our ancestors, yes, yeah. and things like that. And um, sometimes we repress the trauma. We repress the trauma with uh, kind of uh, repeating things of positive things and repeating that, that do, do, do not, not exist and whatever, yes. Do you experience any repressing trauma in you with this course of miracle? I mean, do you think that you are sometimes repress tears or repress uh, sadness because you think that is not all right to express it? I'm 
very rarely sad these days. I mean, I might, you know, maybe be um, a little upset or a little sad for something that happens in the world or something that happens to a friend, but um, I don't dwell in it. Okay. okay? It, it, there's no reason to because anything that has happened in the past can't be changed. So it can be forgiven, but it's in the past. That's you know one of the lessons. Uh, very, very much of the the lessons are talk about. I see only the past. Everything that my point of reference in so many things is what happened in the past. But the past is gone. So, and it doesn't even really exist anymore because it's gone. The only time that is real is what's here right now. This is this is real. The future hasn't happened. I shouldn't be throwing myself into what I might want to happen because I don't know, really. I have thoughts, but they may not be real thoughts. So it's easier to just go through all of the emotions, the, the thought of emotions, the circumstances, let's call them, of this world when... Um, we have a, when I have a new perspective on it. Trauma, we all have trauma and sometimes we don't even realize it. It will rise up when it's ready, when we're ready, and we may not even realize we're ready, but it will come up, but it will dissipate quicker mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. where our minds are now. Okay. And um, I've, I've been listening recently to some uh, YouTubes and uh, podcasts from Gabor Mate. Ah, yes, I don't know do. If, yeah. Yes, I love him. Yes, I like it. He's, yeah, he's amazing, you know. And I love what he, he's talking about, you know, and that it's, it's how we take it in that is the trauma. It isn't necessarily the situation, but it's how I hold on to it and I interpret it in my life that becomes my traumatic experience, you know, and the, the fact that science is proving now that there is that connection between our mind and our emotional health, our physical health and our emotions is amazing. It's amazing work. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I guess that uh, the Course of Miracles all the time in the lessons is repeating, yes, to you that not to attach, yes, for this reason all the time it's like this kind of uh, the word that you see is not real, and yes, <coughs> I mean, kind of uh, repetition of the word meaningless, I like it, meaningless, yeah. yes, everything is meaningless and it's like, wow, yeah, like this diminish things because ego always amplify things yes things yes yeah yeah and i've given it the meaning i've decided how meaningful anything is you know and so i also decide how much i want that to affect me mm -hmm. okay so you know the wonderful thing about this this work or other spiritual work when we realize the the power of our thoughts and that it's just a thought thoughts can be changed that's what the, the course is doing with it's forming new neural neural pathways in our mind with these repetitions and with these these practices every you know five times a day or at some point it's you know every 15 minutes and on the hour on the half hour you know to to realign our minds with a different thought system. We have been living in a fear-based thought system. And what we're trying to do, and again, any spiritual path is going to be working on that as well, is to let go of that and to have something else. I mean, I often say in the lessons, and people probably get tired of it, the movie Frozen and Elsa's song, Let It Go. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Let it it's go. Very beautiful. It's as easy as let it go. Don't <laughs> hold on to anything. 
because there's nothing really that's worth holding on to except love. And you had asked a question about that. I just, I know we're running out of time, but um, there's a wonderful line in the text that says, all your past is gone, only the blessings remain. So all of those loving thoughts, all of those loving memories that you had, you know, with your family, like with, with Christmas and the family gathered around and everyone just feeling so good together. We keep that. Every loving thought we hold on to. And we're not, we're not trying to get rid of those. We're just trying to release the ones that weren't loving, the ones that are actually tainting the loving ones. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually, recently I have this experience. It was okay. funny because I was praying and say, oh, show me a, a new path that I can work with this. And you appear in the, in the channel. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Just, uh, the, yes, if this last question, maybe you can help me with this. Uh, if you can um, give us, uh, for our public, uh, let's, say, let's say a good practical lesson. For a good well, you know, it, it really depends on what the person is what a, a big issue is in their life, big fear of abandonment. And so there's a, a lesson, I already mentioned it, that God goes with me wherever I go. And because I, I tell her, I said, if God is going with you wherever you go, one, you can never be alone. You can never be abandoned. Someone and a big someone is always there with you. So that is um, that is one lesson that like is it, well, it's good for anyone, specific, but specifically for her because of her fears of abandonment. Another woman uh, has said that the a lesson that we just had. I do not perceive my own best interests, and that works for people who like to be in control. No, this is what I want to have happen, okay? No. Well, the idea that I don't really know what's in my own best interest. So if I can step back and say, okay, show me what is the best for me, or I think I want this or better because I might be limiting myself if I try to be in control of my life, there's another lesson that I, well, it's the lesson is I could see peace instead of this, but I like to say I can see peace instead of this, that no matter what's going on around me, that if I stand back and I quiet myself and breathe, breathing is really important. <laughs> um. I could maybe see this situation differently and see that there's somewhere in here, there, there's a place, there's a way that I can be peaceful no matter what it is that seems to be going on around me. So, um, I mean, but there's so many. I mean, each there's 365 to choose from. One of, um, and I... During the course of the year, you'll hear me say, this is a favorite. This is a favorite. Oh, one of my favorites is that the power of decision is my own. That I, I do get to decide in that I'm responsible for my decision, but I don't want to decide by myself because I can't see the possible outcome of everything. So I decide whether or not I'm going to try to do this on my own or do this with the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are, in one of the lessons, uh, there are lines that we are to say every day to ask, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? So we're looking for guidance in everything we do. And 
I, I've said it already this year. I don't know if you listened to the, I don't remember which lesson I did, but it's very powerful to say all that I know is that I don't know. And right. that doesn't make me, that doesn't make me weak. That actually gives me a lot of strength. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. <laughs> that is very nice and generous from you. Um, so please, uh, to uh, all of you that watch this video, uh, please go to to the channel of uh, Janet Weisman if you want more lessons and also to know this practical exercise. <laughs> she posted every day in her channel in the morning uh early yeah um, so you can begin your morning uh, with these lessons and it's really really good so um, and also please subscribe to our channel and thank you janet for being here and we hope to have you another time with new questions uh, thank you thank you for inviting me thank you for you know being the beautiful soul that you are so um, I, I, I'm very, I feel very blessed and grateful that you've asked me to be interviewed, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Have a beautiful day.